Wow, this lighting. Hello everyone, it's Brianna. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Today, I wanted to show you guys all of the books that I have purchased recently in preparation for all of the social distancing that I'll be doing. I have a whole hoard of books ready to be read by me during this time of self-imposed quarantine. So let's get to it. Okay, so the first books I want to talk about were actually sent to me by Book of the Month. I have two books this month that I got for their March box. Book of the Month is a monthly subscription box that they basically pick five titles of the most interesting books that are new releases for the year and then they showcase them. A lot of times it's emerging authors, cool books that I would have never read without having seen them as a subscription choice. And you can pick one and then have add-ons if you'd like to read the other ones as well. And you get a new book each month. So it's really exciting. I picked The Splendid and the Vile by Eric Larson, which is a book about Winston Churchill and his family during World War II. It just is a, I think, I don't know if it's a biography per se, but it's a nonfiction account of his time and his struggles during World War II as the leader of the UK. And I was a history major in college. I really like history. I actually didn't study um, World War II history at all during that time. I was focused on East and Southeast Asian history. That was my concentration. So I'm really excited to actually read something in a field that I didn't focus on when I was in school. So hopefully this one's going to be exciting. I'm very much looking forward to this guy. The second book that I got from Book of the Month was my add-on, which was The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. This one is even more of a doorstopper than The Splendid in the Vial. This guy, I think it's like over 700 pages. It's a really, really long novel, but I remember reading The Secret History when I was in in school and I really liked it when I was younger so I thought I would check out The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. It's her other really famous novel. I think there's a movie adaptation for it but I'm not really sure but um, this is something I'm looking forward to as well. It is a little bit intimidating because it's significantly longer than The Secret History and I'm really glad that Book of the Month was able to get me these books because um, another thing I really like about their service, um, actually my sister has been a paying customer for a very long time. That's how I initially heard about Book of the Month. She loves their services and I don't typically buy hardcover books unless they're from used bookstores or something like that because they're super expensive. It's like $18 for young adult novels and it's upwards of like $25 for adult novels in hardcover. But for Book of the Month, actually if you use the code SKY5, I'll leave that in the description below, you can get your first hardcover for $9.99, so $10 for a hardcover, which I think otherwise would have been like $30 or something like that. It's crazy, right? But $10 and this is yours. Any add-on that you get is always $10 regardless of whether or not you have a code. All add-ons are $10 and shipping is always free. Now that that's out of the way, I also went to used bookstores and picked up a lot of things as well. And I had one last stop at Target and Barnes and Noble uh, a couple days ago to pick up some final items so that I would have a lot of stuff to read. First, Marcus Zusak's Bridge of Clay. I picked this up because I, I didn't know anything at all about this book besides the fact that it got mixed reviews, but I remember loving The Book Thief when I was in elementary school, so I figured I would give this a try. This is a story about, I think, a, a boy who has some deep secret about his family and then, and then it slowly unravels through the course of the story. I'm not really sure. I read the inside fluff once before this. I wasn't prepared to talk about this. This, I purchased it not for the story, but because I was familiar with the author, so I guess we'll find out. I think I got this for like six dollars, so that was what was going on. Used bookstores make me buy things that I otherwise would not have purchased, but Bridge of Clay, that's gonna happen sometime. Hopefully it's good. We Must Be Brave is another book that I purchased at the used bookstore. This is a book that takes place during World War II England, I'm pretty sure. And this woman is now living in a city that's being bombed during World War II and she has to escape and during her escape she meets a little girl, this little girl, who changes her life, teaches her things about herself. As she discovers more about the little girl, she discovers more about herself, that type of story. I like historical fiction, I love familial relationships like this, so I thought this was right up my alley and I picked it up because, I don't know, heartwarming slash heartbreaking World War II stories are somewhat of a drug for me. I'm obsessed with them, so this I hopefully lives up to all the expectations that I have for it. The next book I picked up was Philomena. This uh, is the movie cover version of the book, which I normally don't buy, but since it was a used bookstore, this is the only one available and it was only a dollar or two, so I picked it up because 
for that price, movie cover is fine. Um, this book is about a young woman in Ireland who had gotten pregnant as a teenager and is forced to join a convent to kind of repent persons, I think, and she has to give up her baby. And then 50 years down the road, she tries to go to the United States to find the baby that she had been forced to give up before now that he's an adult. And that is the story of them trying to reconnect and find each other. Love those types of stories. I hope this makes me cry. I hope this makes me feel things. Hopefully this is a really good story. Is this Dame Judi Dench? I don't know. This, hopefully, good book. We'll find out. The final thing I picked up from the used bookstore or actually is it I have okay I have a couple more things I picked up in the used bookstore but this is one of the final things is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell um this will be the fourth book that I've read from her I read Eleanor and Park which I didn't like Carry On which I thought was okay and then Wayward Son which I didn't like and uh I don't know what motivated me to get this it was really cheap that was one thing but people keep recommending Rainbow Rowell books to me all of the time whenever I ask for good novels to read and I feel like they must be reading something else because I have not liked this lighting is crazy that I have not liked any of the books that I've read the highest I've rated any of her books is three stars which is carry on and this is the book I think originally from which the Simon Snow carry on series originated it exists like as a book within this book and fangirl as far as I know let's see is about a girl and her twin sister who were both really obsessed with the Simon Snow book series in their youth and then now when they're going to college they start to grow apart as one of the sisters is no longer into the fandom life and the other one is starting to find herself socially isolated and alone because her sister who she's always been dependent on has grown away from her and then now she dives headfirst back into the fandom life and then she uses it as like a comfort mechanism a coping mechanism for herself in college um, I'm interested. I kind of relate to that, right? Fandom is a big part of my life as well, so I think maybe I'll like this book more. Hopefully, I just, I can't go, I can't go worse than it has been already. I gave Wayward Son one star, so like this can't be worse. So hopefully, I like this. Maybe it will give me some insight onto why people like Carry On so much. I, I have no expectations. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe I'll hate it. We'll find out. And if I hate it, never reading another book by her again. I will not be convinced no matter how many times you recommend them to me. This will be the last one if I don't like it. Okay, this is the final book I picked up from a used bookstore. This is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I had mentioned reading this in high school, high school or middle school earlier and really liking it. Um, I hadn't read it since and then I feel like a lot of the books that I read in high school that I loved are uh, questionable now. Like have I read them today at the age of 23 I would be like, Ooh, what was I thinking when I was 15? So <laughs> I got The Secret History just to find out if this holds up to the test of time, if I still like it as an adult the way I liked it when I was a young teenager. So this one, um, as you can see, a lot shorter than The Goldfinch. I think I'm going to read this probably this week sometime, so I'm excited about this one. Secret History. Hopefully I like it as much as I did when I was a kid. We'll find out. So from Target and Barnes and Noble, I bought a couple more books. The first being The Good Neighbor, which is a biography, I think, about Fred Rogers, who I grew up watching on TV. I used to love watching his show, and I think everything that he stood for and everything that he taught me, it was a big influence on my generation and the generation prior to me. So I really want to read about this man. I feel like he's such an anomaly in terms of our modern society. I really want to know about his lifestyle, the type of man that he was behind closed doors and all of that. So I'm really excited to kind of find out more about him as a person. And this is going to be an exciting read for me. It's not too long. So this is something I'm looking forward to reading very, very much. Okay, so the next book I bought from Target, this was totally an impulse buy because I don't normally read the horror genre at all, but I picked up It by Stephen King. I don't even want to hold it up for that long because it's so fat. It's over a thousand pages, but this is, um, if you have somehow lived under a rock and have never heard of it, a story about this clown named Pennywise who basically terrorizes this town and a bunch of, a group of kids have to fight it, defeat it, and then they come back again later in part two as adults have to come back and beat it forever so that it stops terrorizing their town. And that is this, and it is an iconic novel. Um, everyone talks about it as being one of Stephen King's best works and I want to find out what all the hype is about because if he got that many people to read a 1000 plus page book I feel like it must be good right? So I'm not a horror fanatic. I don't I don't think I've ever read a Stephen King novel before but this guy maybe is where we're gonna start. Go big or go home. So It by Stephen King 
she's a thick one. The Outsiders by Essie Hinton is another book that I picked up. This one is significantly smaller than it. Um, it's really short. This was one of my uh, middle school friend's favorite books and I'm not in contact with her any longer but I remember her telling me that this like changed her life. This was to her what Perks of Being a Wallflower was to me when I was 12 or 13 and it really mattered a lot to her. It meant so much to her and I actually have pretty much no idea what this is about. I think this is another type of like outcast story and then a teenager finds ways to fit in. I, I, I have no idea. I never had to read it for school either so this is pretty much my first introduction to it as an adult so I hope it hits as hard as it would have if I had read it when I was 14. I am looking forward to it. It's super short so I think this could be like a one day read and I'll let you guys know what I think about this one. Moving on, as you guys know, I recently finished reading Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer and I purchased Supernova, which is the third and I think final installment of the Renegades series by her. And I love Renegades. Um, I have mixed opinions on Arch Enemies, but a lot of people said that Supernova is the best installment of the trilogy. Everyone I know who's read this says that the third one's the best one, so I have really high hopes for it. I think I'm gonna like it. I was told that Max, who is my favorite character, appears a lot in this book, so woo, I'm excited. I have a lot to say. She's kind of thick, not more so than the other ones, so I'm really excited. I think this might be a one day read as well. I feel like her books are really easy to read, so super looking forward to this. I really want to know how it ends. I want to know what happens to Max, who is my beloved baby. I love him so much, and don't tell me what happens if you guys have already read this. I'm super looking forward to this. Probably one of my most anticipated reads of the ones that I have purchased. Now from Barnes & Noble, I purchased a couple more books. The first one being The Girl with Seven Names, Escape from South Korea, or not South, sorry, Escape from North Korea. Oh my god, that was such a faux pas. Escape from North Korea. This is a memoir written by Han So Lee. She had escaped from North Korea, I think as a teenage girl, and this is her story as she reflects back upon what her life was like in North Korea and how her escape went down and what she, what happened to her afterwards. It has really high reviews. My sister told me this one that she anticipated reading a lot, and I picked it up when I was in Barnes & Noble, and I'm really looking forward to reading this as well. I really like memoirs. I am excited to read this story to find out what she has to say and I hope I cry. I don't know why I always want books to make me cry but I hope it makes me cry. I think this is such a moving and powerful story and I hope it comes across that way when it is written. So we're looking forward to this as well. The next book I picked up, The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson, the same author who wrote uh, the Splendid and the Vile, which is the Winston Churchill book. This is another nonfiction historical book, which is about, I think, the World's Fair in Chicago. Yeah, in 1893, the World's Fair in Chicago. And it chronicles all the people who work on the World's Fair and make it like this grand, amazing scheme. And the other part of the story is it focuses on this serial killer who uses the chaos of the World's Fair and all the excitement around it to commit a bunch of murders. So this is something I'm really excited to read. Uh, this is the type of nonfiction that I feel like is really fun and interesting. Maybe I jumped the gun in buying another Eric Larson book before I'd even read one, but honestly uh, the covers are always so interesting and I feel like the way the books are marketed make them sound really interesting, so I picked this guy up. It's a lot shorter than the Winston Churchill ones, so I think maybe I'll read this one before the Winston Churchill just so I can kind of dip my toes into the pool before I dive in and I'm looking forward to it. This sounds really interesting. I want to get into reading nonfiction a little bit more this year, so that's what's going on. The second to last book I got was A Man Called Ove. I love stories about cranky old people. I think I'm going to be a cranky old person in the future, um, although I don't think I'm going to have some kind of tragic backstory that explains why I'm so cranky and old. It's just going to be because I'm mean. And <laughs> But for this, I think this is a story about a man, older man, who is, quote, the grumpiest man you will ever meet, and he finally starts to open up a little bit when a young couple with two boisterous daughters moves in next door, and as they kind of get to know each other, we understand and learn more about this man called Ove, Ove, Ove and why he is the way he is, and we learn new things about him, and people in his community start to see him in a different light. And I think this type of story, again, you guys have heard me mention it multiple times, how much I like familial relationships in books. And this is something that I think sounds like it's going to be very moving. And I love reading about old people. 
I sound so weird. Why am I talking about old people that way? I feel that's <laughs> kind of disrespectful. I don't mean that in any kind of way, but I mean they're the stories of people who have lived for so long and they have so much to say and there's so many there's so much backstory, right? For someone who's lived for decades. I have I have little backstory because I've lived for 23 years. I remember about 15 of those years, whereas someone who's lived for like 80 years will have so much more to say. I think that's why I like reading about old people so much. There's just so much rich history there. And this one, I don't know, I'm excited to find out what's gonna happen. The final book is so heavy for some reason, even though it's not thick. I swear to God, this is heavier than my hardcover books. Sapiens, A Brief History of Mankind. This is something that is on every list of books that you need to read before you die. It's, it is what it says it is, A Brief History of Mankind, and it is recommended to me every single time. It's like books that you need to read before you die, books that will change the way you view the world, books to inspire you, etc. The super mainstream book that is just like a must, it lives up to the hype that it gets, and this is this is the one! It's everywhere on every academic page as well. People always say that this one is a really easy read for people who want to read about the history of mankind and they're not that smart, which is great because I'm not that smart and I think this is probably going to be a more accessible thing to me to read and I am very excited. It is so heavy. My arm's getting tired. How is this so heavy? I think the paper is just really thick, but I'm super excited about this guy. Um, this lighting is crazy i'm very sorry it just that's what's happening and yeah this is the final book that i picked up for my quarantining i don't know i don't know i've never read a book like this before so i am looking forward to learning a lot from it and hopefully i like it as much as everyone says that i will and those were all the books that I have purchased recently. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll leave all the titles of the books down below. I did purchase these all in store, but um, I'm sure you can find them online as well. Don't go outside if you don't need to. Stay safe, wash your hands, don't touch people. What else do I have to say? That's all. All right, stay safe, stay healthy. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.